So there are many advantages to buying used and often vintage woodwork machinery. They're often much more robust than machines that are made these days and you can get them at a great deal. The only caveat is a lot of machinery out there available is powered by three phase motors. And for most of us, if we're lucky, we only have split phase 220 or even some of us who have only single phase 120. For that, I have what's called a VFD. And this is a variable frequency drive. Today we're going to talk about this particular product and how I implemented it into this machine. I showed you a couple videos before on how I restored this old gem. It was a diamond in the rough. And how I used this three phase machinery in a shop where I don't have three phase power. So let's just dig right in and I'll show you how this device works. So at the heart of this Powermatic Model 60 8 inch joiner is this Leeson 3 phase 3 horsepower 220 volt number motor. This motor is really robust for this machine and I certainly didn't want to replace this with some 100, 120 volt or split phase 220 volt equivalent. This thing just eats wood and never slows down. So in order to make this work I implemented this Teco FM 150 VFD to this machine and it was really simple. Let's just go through the basic connections, show you this enclosure that I've got where I've mounted the VFD and show you how the basics of how this thing is wired up. So this is just a simple junction box enclosure. I'll put all the parts in the description for a nice neat build of materials for implementing this yourself. I wanted a way to protect the VFD and some of the components internally here from dust best I could. Mounting this on the wall would probably make for a better use if you have multiple machines that you want to hook up to three phase power and you only want to use one size VFD. I've got four mounting screws and then I'll just slide this cover off so you can see what's going on. For those who are unfamiliar by the way, this is a rotary disconnect. This is allows me to disconnect the power. Power is running to this all the time so the VFD is always on as long as this disconnect is energized and I put the disconnect on there so that I could de-energize it so that I can isolate this device should I need to work on it or if I just want to turn it off. Also while we're in here at this point I'm going to just give a note of caution if you're not comfortable and well versed in world of electronics and electrical wiring I suggest that you do not get involved in something like this and take this as simply just for educational purposes. The potential electricity in this enclosure can kill you and you should respect it and understand how it works before you go and play with any of this stuff. Now with that said, if you're well versed in doing this stuff, this is pretty much a walk in the park. This device makes getting three phase power for your machine incredibly simple and gives you a lot of flexibility. So let's take a look. The first we've got the FM50 Fluxmaster. We've also got an, a local circuit breaker for local isolation and protection as well as our rotary disconnect which you saw come through the enclosure and that's what this pull is here. So basically what happens is the power comes in, we, like I said we've got our twist lock connector, our 220 nominal volt split phase come in, comes into the rotary disconnect which I can isolate turning on or off, goes into this two pole circuit breaker for local protection, comes out of the circuit breaker and goes right to the VFD. This supplies the power to the unit and also to the machine. From there, this guy provides a three phase power out and that's what you can see this fat cable coming out the back and going through a cable gland to the back. I went through the machine directly to the motor because it made for a really clean one cable into this enclosure and that's it and the rest goes through the machine including the input from the on and off switch which I'm going to show you in just a moment. So there's really two ways you can operate this machine. You can either operate it with this on and off switch here or you can use the manual switch on the keypad of this device. Now I've deactivated the keypad version and just made it so it runs on that manual switch there on the left. Now this has a paddle switch. It's a very nice and common switch that you'd find in most of your other woodworking machinery. And what I've basically got going on is a low voltage input to the VFD. So when you press this switch and it is uh, as a maintained switch, meaning it stays closed, it's not momentary. It will tell this VFD, and when you stop it, it'll open up that input, and this VFD will know to turn off. This is all programmable. You can use basically any switch. It's just looking for an input, or as well, you can just simply use the VFD to turn it on and off. Obviously, putting an enclosure cover on this and wanting to keep this dust free, relatively speaking, you can see there's dust inside there because I don't have a gasket on this. Um, you don't want to get inside here every time, you don't want to stick your fingers in there. It's much easier to do that switch. So that's that. Let's get into the connections and show you the wire by wire how this thing actually wires up. 
Okay, so the wiring for this is relatively simple. Like I said before, the power comes in here and this is the power source followed by the power out. Now these three legs right here, which are black, white, and red, are my three phases for that go out through the motor into this cable, as well as an additional ground which gets bonded to this enclosure. To the same bonding, it's basically the same potential PE, protected earth, and they're all common to each other. The last cable I have is this one right here, and this is a low voltage, it's just a small, just a small 18 gauge wire. It actually looks more than just two leads, but it's not, it's just because they're twisted and uh, cable strapped together. These two wires, when their contact closure is made, this guy goes on, and when it's broken, it goes off. Really simple. Like I said, you can use any switch you want with this. It just has to be maintained for the way I've configured the programming for this machine. So here's just the front view. I'm going to actually turn the machine on so you can actually see what the keypad does. So as you can see on the keypad, it's actually blinking 60.0, .0 and that's 60 hertz for us in North America. And uh, the speed setting that you're going to set for this is going to ramp from 0 to 60, in this case, hertz. Um, now I've set up something you may have picked up in the fact that it took so long to get up to 60 hertz. And normally, in, in most cases, your motor is going to start up immediately, and this creates a huge inrush current and will probably dim the lights uh, in your home if you have this in your home. The nice feature about this is that you can set a ramp going up as well as a ramp going down when you de-energize or, or power it off. This ramp makes things start up a little bit slower but really make a nice balanced power up for this machine. One of the other advantages to this machine is that it has an electronic brake and if you notice that I can actually stop this thing almost on a dime. I don't do that. Uh, I actually choose like a one and a half or two second uh, ramp up and ramp down because it's a really smooth and balanced operation but you can actually stop this thing quite quickly with this electronic brake which is just one of many features that this device offers. So the VFD has many features. You can go through a list of settings with this device. Like I said, you can set uh, an acceleration time, a deceleration time. You can change the motor direction if you want to. The Fret set the frequency limits. Um, you can set the type of input that you're using, how you want to control it. It's just endless, as well as the braking and the stopping methods, whether you want to coast to stop or have a controlled braking. Uh, it's really incredible what this thing offers. If you want to look at this thing in the further detail, you can check out the PDF. I'll put a link in the description and you can just see just the endless number of features that you can do with this, even just this basic model of this VFD. So that's it, a really nifty, inexpensive product for using three-phase machinery in your shop. Next time you come across the three-phase machine, maybe you won't turn it down, maybe you consider it. There's a lot of great deals out there for old machinery. This is a really robust device. It's not the, the highest name brand, but it is very inexpensive and easy to implement. And I have to say, using this on a couple applications, this is really robust and it's never failed me. It's worked really well. It's easy to install. The instructions are really clear. It's just a great product. This is a simple machine that doesn't take full advantage of the VFD and all of its programmability, but uh, it certainly has a great feature of braking and slowing and uh, ramping up for our application with this 8-inch joiner. I didn't go into much detail on how the third phase is generated with this device. I will put a link in the description from somebody else who does a really good job explaining how this process is done in terms of physics. As always, please rate, comment, and subscribe, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below, and I'll be sure to answer them for you. Take care, guys. See you soon.